Red Dead Online, a truly beautiful gaming experience. Galloping on your horse through the lush meadows as dozens of wild animals frolic beside you, except when you're trying to hunt. Then the animals do their best impression of my father and leave me alone to starve. For all its beauty, however, this online mode has been neglected, which has led to many people asking Rockstar to save the game. I agree with this, as I'd love to see more updates, more love, and more ways to emotionally damage my mates. As you can see here, I've hogtied my dear friend Stealth Omato and placed him face down in the mud while he was AFK. If you squint your eyes, you can see that he is in fact inside the left testy of a penis. I think this artistic demonstration says an awful lot about humanity. Rockstar, you did email me once saying that you liked my Red Dead videos, which actually meant a lot to me. So if you are still watching, I ask that you please continue looking after this game, as the foundation is there, but the potential is massive. Amato and I realise that it's been a hot minute since we've updated our drip. It's time for some makeovers with the bros, so we ride out towards Blackwater. Oh, you can't just right to check me. <laughs> I like to ride with my machete out as it makes me feel medieval. We reach the city and I spot an opportunity for a courageous double kill. To my absolute surprise, I get both of them in quite a spectacular way. The citizens of the town don't clap or applaud my accomplishment, rather they run to local law enforcement. I guess Blackwater is full of 6 9s ancestors as they're absolutely all snitches. This forces me to execute a bunch of innocent people before they can rat. The average lifespan in this era is 35 and I'm probably shaving a couple of years off that. All they had to do was gas me up. I hitch my horse up because this is a society and then make my way into the clothing store. I don't know why, but for some reason I enjoy making my character look nothing like a cowboy. I purchase a new white soft sweater. Welcome to the Wild West. Marto tried to make himself look like a pimp, but it kind of turned out more like Willy Wonka if he had an aggressive meth habit. He also paid big money for the throw up emote, so he just keeps gagging and spewing everywhere. We couldn't be more ready. Before we get down to business, there's a side to this game we neglect. We don't feed ourselves or our horses as we never have enough supplies. This leads to our health and energy cores always being low, so today that changes. I proceed to accidentally buy myself 30 cans of overpriced apricots. I hope the big man loves canned fruit. Next step is to hunt some animals so we can eat nourishing meat. Marto tells me that he's landed a big kill. Dinner is served. Dinner is served. <laughs> well... <laughs> no disrespect. No respect for this thing. We eventually find a three-star white-tailed deer and herd it down to the river. I tie it up and then just start laying into the hoofed mammal, landing body shot after body shot. I'm in a cashmere sweater punching a frightened woodland creature. This is peak alpha. We take the deer back to camp and it's always nice arriving back here. My upgraded tent is great for the wet weather. Marto even upgraded his sleeping quarters from a plank of wood to a small shelter. His mother would be so proud. In fact, she is so proud. She's also very wet. I'm getting a lot of mileage from naming my dog Marto's mother. We cook up a storm. It's actually really wholesome. Look at the big man. Now though, it's time to make some money. As we ride off, another player arrives at our camp and she seems friendly, so I decide to make a move. I attempt to give her the rest of my three-star deer carcass as a dowry so that I can legally wed her. I'm unable to put it on her horse, so I just dump it in the mud. I assume she's pretty flattered right now. We've got trouble though, as she's here on a mission and there's bandits everywhere. Even worse, my fresh sweater is now covered in deer blood, which is going to be incredibly hard to wash out. In hindsight, vibrant white probably wasn't a great choice of color. Laundry day is going to be an absolute undead nightmare. We help the lass capture the gang leader and she says thank you by trampling me with her steed. As the probably love of my life rides off into the distance, I do the mature thing and attempt to kill her hostage, but I fail. The lesson here is if you open your heart and let women in, they'll destroy your clothing. And true story, one of my ex-girlfriends actually chopped up all my clothing. I was playing Halo with my mates in a garage and I lost track of time. In fairness, it was like six hours. We were pretty into it. I glance at my phone and I have like 20 missed calls from her. I've got messages from my mum and her mum. It was crazy. I'm thinking someone's died, so I call her back as fast as I could and she says, who is she? Woman, I'm flying around in a banshee sinking beers in a sweaty garage with seven dudes. This is like the most virgin activity I could be doing. Now that I think about it, it explains a lot, like why I'm so concerned with the condition of my new virtual sweater. We've got to talk to Anthony Foreman, who's perched up in St. Denis, roughly one kilometer away. Reaching him would be a simple task for most, but this is Mardo and myself we're talking about, so I'll speed run you through the process. Naturally, we would like to test out these new fire arrows, so we ignite some of the local citizens as a victimless social experiment. Word gets out, and a citywide manhunt starts for the two of us, and we're forced to murder a baker's dozen worth of lads and lasses. We then chase witnesses through the street, executing them in an array of creative ways. It gets too red hot, so we steal a wagon and escape. 
Marto chooses to slav squat on my head rather than riding shotgun, which I think we can all respect. Eventually, we make our way back to Saint Denis for the second time, but we figure it'd be rude not to take the tram. I run after it, attempting to board, but I'm brutally crushed. The conductor is credited with the kill, suggesting that this was no accident. Toxic. I run after the tram, but it's too fast, so I instead decide I'll just aggressively kick myself. Not metaphorically, I genuinely stomp myself, which takes a lot of willpower, as my old corpse still looks quite frankly stunning in that sweater. I then talk to Anthony Foreman and accept the mission to secure the last diamond we're yet to recover. My current girlfriend of seven years really loves diamonds. She keeps saying shit like, Hey, look at that girl's diamond ring. I wish I had one of those on my finger. It's like, stop being jealous, bozo. That's her property. We ride into Rhodes and the lighting is next level. We've been tasked with infiltrating a meeting at the local parlor house, but we decide that a covert operation is cringe and we just start firing arrows into everyone. Arrows are cheap and we are bowling on a budget. We murder loads of enemies, it's great. Most of them are actually trying to kill us too, which is a happy coincidence and a welcome change from our usual antics. How cool would a wave defense style mission or game mode be where you have to defend from an ever-growing onslaught of enemies that gets harder with each wave? Dare to dream. The sneaky malakas loaded the diamond into a wagon and took off into the countryside. I pull out my flaming shotgun and begin igniting everyone humanely, but then I'm thrown to the ground. Wow. We find the wagon, but my sweater is now completely soiled in mud. Fortunately, bleach has been invented, so I should be able to get the stains out, and then I might just drink some because why did I buy a white sweater? We steal the wagon and ride to safety. Mission complete, and we pocket a cool $107 for our efforts. Not bad, but I have another business venture that I've somewhat been neglecting. My moonshine shack that I purchased in the middle of a swamp. Also, this is the moment Marto went to get some food, and I put him face down in my penis art. When he comes back to his Xbox, you can truly appreciate the range of different emotions and realizations he had in the singular word he says. Jeff? I ask the big girl to brew a strong batch of moonshine, but to maximize the profits, we will need to flavor it. I'm missing the key ingredient, blackberry. I guess we're about to set off on a quest for blackberries. It reminds me of when Sam and Frodo had to reach Mordor, except there'll be less annoying tiny people and more sexual tension. Before we leave, we quickly get high on our own supply and then proceed to slap each other over and over again, as it never seems to get old. Hey. <laughs> hey. Look at this with Sam. <laughs> We ride off towards literally the other side of the map so we can forage bushes and then a woman asks for our help. Her friend's been captured and we agree to save him. If she started walking backwards, I know there'd be a beeping sound as there's most definitely a dump truck hiding under that cotton twill skirt. We decide to attempt another knife only challenge. This time it goes surprisingly well. If there's one thing Red Dead did right, it's the melee animations. This game really makes you feel like you're a psychopath. I cut him free and on the ride home, he tells me his tale of abuse and horror. The real horror, however, is the paycheck we receive for rescuing this guy from the local law enforcement. $4.84. Next time I save someone, I'll first use this $4.84 to run down to the general store in Strawberry and buy some scented candles and a couple of bottles of lube so at least I can enjoy being railed by the sheriff. We ride to the hills of somewhere I googled and find plenty of blackberries. Well, rather, I found barely enough blackberries because Marto kept eating them, but I think we can all agree he earned the right to treat himself. On the ride home, I take a shortcut along the railroad and then realize it's elevated out of the swamp, which is frankly great city planning as this would be a real flood zone. With no safe way off, I sent it and my horse Bigger D dies a ghastly death. Marto kindly uses a bottle of horse reviver, but it's in vain. As we arrive back at the moonshine shack, for reasons unknown to me, my horse leaps like a bloody gazelle straight into a pillar and kills itself again. This stallion needs Jesus and a hug. What happens next may shock you, so viewer discretion is advised. You know how much these cost? Nah, it's right, bro. I got you. Oh. I just drank horse reviver. <laughs> Did you just drink horse reviver? Like ketamine. <laughs> You just did ketamine. The character's like, don't know what to do with this, I'm just gonna drink it. The moonshine still hasn't brewed yet, so I do the only sensible thing. I use all my gold bars to completely pimp out the bar. First things first, I buy a band expansion for downstairs. I wouldn't describe them as hard workers, as they sort of just stand around looking more suicidal than my dead horse. We take the initiative and have a good old fashioned band practice, I guess. We find it surprisingly amusing. I also drop another 15 bars on some hunting decor. 
they did not skimp out on the decorations. I'm not saying it's overdone, but there's literally a crocodile spider manning on the roof. I think I like it, but I honestly don't know. The only thing that's certain is Mardo is contributing very little to the band right now. My man kicked the original musician out of his seat to sit there looking pretty. And he sure does look pretty. We spend the rest of the brewing time doing some good old fashioned fishing. Mardo catches a huge catfish, which is actually super impressive as I can never catch anything. I was trying to get a nice photo of his accomplishment, but I feel the man floating dead in his rowboat kind of ruins it. What an attention seeking dick. Having built to this moment for a couple of hours now, it's time to deliver the precious moonshine cargo. Other players can steal it, so we'll have to sweat. As we approach Saint Denis, there are some revenue agents checking carts. It's a tense moment, but fortunately the dodgy suit just idly looks at the side of the cart and not inside. If he got up on his tiptoes or took a wander around, we'd be cooked, but fortunately he doesn't understand the core concept of checking inside a cart. Delighted with ourselves, we ride for the pub. It's at this moment I spot a blue dot on the map. Blue means friendly, but I'm not about to take a chance on my Blackberry Moonshine. I don't usually shoot first, but I pop this little sombrero wearing Malacca in the head, leaving him broken, crying and with trust issues, but our merchandise safe. We deliver the shine and make a cool $226. Not bad. Now while Mardo and I fight to the death, I want to say again that this game needs some love. I have a great time with it, but I only ever play when I'm making a video. That's purely because if I played all the time, I'd have run out of things to do years ago and I like making content on it. I know that it isn't as popular as Grand Theft Auto, but it still sold over 40 million copies, which makes it an unbelievably successful game. If you released some cracking updates and maybe even made the online portion free to play, you'd have players coming back in hordes, which would surely make it a viable business option. Bank heists and more businesses to run seem like a no-brainer, but there's so much more you could do. What about, for example, a rancher update where you could buy, upgrade, and run your own ranch? Maybe outlaws come to raid you from time to time and you have to defend your homestead. Undead Nightmare is still, in my opinion, the best DLC of all time. Could we see zombies one day, or maybe that's too ambitious, but I promise it'd bring players in. You know the entire of Mexico is already right there, in-game, waiting to be explored, but you can only get there by using glitches. There's so many better ideas than mine out there on places like the Reddit, you really don't have to look hard. It feels like the entire framework, the world, the beautiful graphics, the gameplay, the NPCs, the towns and the cities are all right there, it just needs some fresh content. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and thanks for watching. I love you.